Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of Talent X, we're going to be looking at some sample questions of the Talent X examination, which is a competitive examination conducted in India as well as overseas. So we're going to be looking at questions that are asked for, that are a sample of the questions asked for grade 10 students. So we'll be looking at some questions from each subject and how to solve them effectively. Here comes our first question. This question is from physics. A piece of copper and another of germanium are cooled from room temperature to 80 degrees Kelvin. The resistance of each of them increases, each of them decreases, copper increases and that of germanium decreases, copper decreases and that of germanium increases. So which of these is the right option. So this particular question actually has to do with the resistance of substances with respect to temperature. Now when we look at conductors like copper, we see that resistance is directly proportional to temperature. So therefore, the um, resistance of copper or Cu actually decreases when you decrease um, the temperature from room temperature to 80 degrees Kelvin. So um, room temperature again is 300 degrees Kelvin so therefore um, as you decrease the temperature the resistance also decreases. So we can see that options A I mean, options one and three are incorrect because in option one, it says both of their resistances increases and in option three, it says copper's resistance increases. In both cases, this is wrong. Now, let's look at germanium and find out whether is it option two or option four that becomes the right answer. Now, germanium is actually considered as a semiconductor and not a conductor. So therefore, since it's a semiconductor, its relation with its res resistance's relation with temperature actually changes. In this particular case, R is actually inversely proportional to T for semiconductors. So for germanium, if you have a decrease in temperature, you'll find out that the resistance increases so therefore, option four turns out to be the only right option. In option two, it says germanium's resistance decreases. But for that to happen, its temperature has to increase. But over here, the temperature is decreasing, so therefore, germanium's resistance must increase. So therefore, option four, resistance of copper decreasing and germanium increasing, is the right option. Let's look at another question. This one is from chemistry. A volatile liquid has low boiling and low boiling point and weaker inner particle forces, high boiling point and weaker interparticle forces, high boiling point and stronger interparticle forces, lower boiling point and stronger in, in interparticle forces. So, how do we solve this question? Well, it's a good idea to know what volatile means. A volatile liquid is something that is easily evaporated. Now, when a substance is easily evaporated means it turns from liquid to gas. Now, for this to happen, in order to turn from liquid to gas easily, then this particular liquid must have a low boiling point. So therefore, the options that contain high boiling point, which are options two and three, turn out to be incorrect. Now, we know that uh, uh, a volatile liquid has low boiling point. Now, what does that exactly mean? Now, boiling is the scenario where the atmospheric pressure, it, the pressure caused by the vapor, is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Now, for this to happen, we need to have a lot of evaporation happening, and this is only possible when you have weaker 
into particle forces. The weaker interparticle forces would mean that it, the, the liquid can evaporate easily, which means that it can its vapor pressure can reach atmospheric pressure easily, which means that it will have a low boiling point. So as you can see, option one is the only option that is correct. Option four is also incorrect because it says strong interparticle forces. When you have stronger in interparticle forces, it's difficult to um, turn the liquid to gas because of the strong nature of the po interpart strong nature of the interparticle forces. So that means um, you'd have a higher boiling point, which is not what a volatile liquid is. So therefore, option one turns out to be the right option. Now let's look at a question from biology. The type of tissue that forms the framework of the external ear is epithelial, connective, nervous, muscular. Now, um, the external ear, um, the, the, which contains the pinna and the earlobe, um, contains what is known as cartilage. Now, cartilage is um, a flexible tissue which is used to form structures like the um, external ear and the bridge of the nose. So therefore, um, cartilage is actually considered to be a type of connecting tissue. Connecting tissue are those that connect one part of the body to another. Examples include blood, bones, cartilage, etc. So therefore, um, option two, cartilage, turns out to be the right answer. Option A, epithe option one, epithelial tissue is wrong. Epithelial tissue is the one that found it, that's found in skin and other absorbing surfaces. Option three, nervous tissue is also incorrect. It's found in the brain and spinal cord as well as other nerves. Muscular tissue is found in s skeletal and smooth muscles. So therefore, option two, connective tissue, is the right option. Now let's look at a math question. In the given figure, O is the center and AB is a diameter of the circle. AC and BD, when produced, meet at a point E. If angle COD is given as 50 degrees, then find out the angle CED. So we need to find out the value of this particular angle, the angle that forms at point E. Now, how do we solve this question? We know that angle COD is equal to 50 degrees, and the angle is subtended at the center O of the circle. Now, CD is what we call an arc of a circle, so it's uh, actually a portion of the circumference bound by two points. Now the arc CD actually makes two angles um, in our particular scenario. They, they are connected to the point O, which is the center of the circle, but they're also connected to a secondary point B, which is on the circumference. Now in geometry, there is a property that angle tended by an arc at the center of a circle is two times the angle subtended at the perimeter. So that means if angle COD is 50 degrees, then using this property, we can conclude that angle CBD, which is the angle formed by the arc CD at the perimeter, is equal to 25 degrees. Well, that's good to know. But how does it help in finding CED? We'll see. Now, if we look at the figure, you notice that there are three points, A, C, and B, there are four points on the circle, A, B, C, and D. Out of these, you can see that A, B, and C 
form a triangle. And this triangle is present inside the semicircle AB of that particular AOB of that particular circle. So since angle ACB is in the semicircle, its value is equal to 90 degrees. This is again another property. So angle in a semicircle is always equal to 90 degrees. The reason being that um, the side opposite to that particular angle would be a hypotenuse, would be the diameter. So therefore, it would be the it it is the longest chord in the circle. So therefore, the highest angle that can be subtended is well, 90 degrees. So therefore, um, we can conclude that angle ACB is 90 degrees. Now, what does that tell us? If angle ACB is 90 degrees, then that means that the line segment BC is perpendicular to the line segment AE. Now, this means we will get angle ACB as 90 degree, but it also means that we will get angle BCE as also equal to 90 degrees. Since a perpendicular line creates right angles, perpendicular lines form right angles. So, we now know the value of angle CBE, 25 degrees. We now know the angle BCE, which is 90 degrees. So now it's pretty easy to find out the value of angle CED, which is the same as angle CEB. So over here, in triangle CEB, angle CBE is equal to 25 degrees. Angle BCE is equal to 90 degrees. The sum of all angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. So therefore, the value of triangle CEB will be equal to 180 minus the sum of these two angles, which is 90 plus 25. 90 plus 25 gives you 115 and the and subtracting that would give you the answer of 65 degrees so angle CEB is 65 degrees now angle CEB is the same as angle CED it's just that the last point is different but there are, are but they are in the same line so therefore um, angle CED its value is now equal to 65 degrees. So that means, in the question, the correct option would be option 2, 65 degrees. Option 1, 3, and 4 are incorrect because by using properties of angles in a circle, we found out that the right answer is option 2, 65 degrees. Now let's look at the final question for the day. This one is from mental ability. A clock is set to show the correct time at 11 a.m. It gains 12 minutes and 12 hours. What will be the true time when the clock indicates 1 p.m. on the sixth day? <clears throat> now, we will consider 11 a.m. as the time when the clock started. Now, it gains 12 minutes in 12 hours. So that means... One minute is gained per hour. Now, let since it starts at 11 a.m. on day one, day two will begin at 11 a.m. the next day. Day three will also begin at 11 a.m. Day four will also begin at 11 a.m. Day five will also begin at 11 a.m. And on the sixth day, again, 
the clock will pass 11 a.m. Then we have an extra two hours because the destination time that's the time that's asked in the question is 1 p.m. on the sixth day. So basically you have passed five days so 24 hours 24 hours 24 hours 24 hours and then finally another 24 hours to reach day 6 and then plus 2 hours to reach the required time in day 6. So as you can see the total hours that the clock has worked right now would be 24 times 5 plus 2. Now 24 times 5 gives you 120 you can always calculate that. 4 5 is a 20 5 is a 10, 10 plus 2 gives you 12, so 120. Then plus 2, that gives you 122 hours. So, um, 122 hours means that the clock has moved 122 minutes forward. So that means the, the true time of the clock would be 2 hours behind 1 p.m. 2 hours behind 1 p.m. is the right time. Now 2 hours behind 1 p.m. would be 11 a.m. So therefore option 2 turns out to be the right option. So therefore if a clock is set to show correct time at 11 a.m. and it gains 12 minutes in 12 hours, the true time when the clock is indicating 1 p.m. on the sixth day would be actually 11 a.m. So therefore, option two turns out to be the right option. Now that concludes this episode of Talent X. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate, your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates from our channel, then please don't forget to hit the bell icon present below the video. So until the next episode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.